Lesson four, oil quality. This is part of the power stroke series, only the old 7.3. Uh, so there's a zillion of those things around there anyway. Uh, the familiar SAE designations for grades of oil, such as 5W, 10W, 15W, 30, 40, and 50, simply refer to the viscosity of an oil specific temperature. Once again, what does W stand for? What does W stand for on oil? Like 10W, 30, or whatever? What does it stand for? What's the words? that W stands for. You've been through this. You heard it. It starts with W. What is it? Water. Winter. winter. It stands for winter. It does not stand for weight. It stands for winter. 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 You knew that. You knew that. That's it. i got to make him repeat the semester where we did what we did. Right. The lower the W numbers, the easier the engine will crank over in cold ambient temperature. I knew that the first number was temperature. Oh, uh, oh last sure. number All right. All right. All right. Now you've got lubrication property here. you got cooling property. These are the properties of all. you got stress load bearing property. And you've got contaminant suspension property. You're basically wanting to carry this stuff. You know, if your oil is kind of dirty when it comes out of there, it means it's doing its job, right? There's combustion drop out there, they will change. But there are some people that drive really, really gently all the time, and even if they got 3,000 miles on their oil, it will be just as clean. So, you know, some of those people might like, you know, like, Using the wrong viscosity oil can have an adverse effect on the engine performance with a 73 DID diesel motor. And here's your API rating, API service CH4SH, right? And what does the C stand for? C. Huh? Or is it CH? Up there, under CH4SH. Oh, it's got there, if, if it, it could be SH or CH, what does C stand for? That's got to do with uh, diesel. Compression fired. C stands for compression fired, okay? So here you go. 4 equals any foaming. C equals compression ignition. S equals spark ignition. The minimum oil rating that should be used in the DIT is CF4SH. And running one without oil changes can start to cause pretty serious problems. So make sure that you get that. And anywhere additives, viscosity index improvers, foam inhibitors, four point depressants, and friction modifiers are the order of things when you're looking at oil. Now, the root question, session four. It's acceptable to replace an oil filter that has a different canister size as long as the threading is the same. If it'll screw on there, it would be eight. Yeah, you see what we got to be a nice spot, too. The, the, most egre yeah, the most egregious example of this, and not just a seal, I mean the threads and seals can be the same and it still be bad. There was a time back in the, the late uh, or early 90s, like 90, 91, 92, uh, or them, or I think maybe 91, 91 and 92, where the relief valve for the oil pressure system was in the oil filter. And if you put a 92 oil filter on a 91 Jeep, I don't remember the exact gear model, you have to bear with me on a four liter, it would burn the engine up because you used the wrong oil filter. And we had to change out two engines that the oil change outlet down the road destroyed that way, whenever I was in the Ford place. Right. Now look at this right here. Oh, look at here. Oh, lesson five, air inlet and exhaust system. Now this engine requires a huge amount of air to run at peak efficiency. That's why we're shoving it in there instead of letting the atmosphere push it in there, right? The air inlet system designed to supply the engine with all the clean air it needs. Lack of air intake can be detrimental to engine performance and starting capabilities. If the air cleaner is busted, do not try to fix it with duct tape. Put another air cleaner on it. I'm talking about if the housing is because it will suck dirt in there and you will have a huge bill. And if you're ever looking at one that's, you know, got losing compression, burning oil, puffing a lot of smoke out the, uh, I mean, of compression out the oil uh, filler, and you look in there, a lot of times you'll see dirt on the inside of the, where the manifold has been sucking it past the filter. Or you know these filters that are crummy old filters they put in there that they, they get weak and they droop and they, they don't seal right and all that kind of stuff? You know, good quality stuff's important. Your exhaust system on the 7.3 DIT, the exhaust system has a dual purpose. It allows the removal of exhaust gases from the filter. It uses escaping exhaust gases to drive the turbo and it supplies boost pressure to the air intake. You got an exhaust pressure, back pressure system right there. And that's to help the engine warm up. And what it basically does, you know, you think about a heat riser. It's sort of like that, but it basically causes the uh, the back pressure uh, is actually it traps it. If that thing goes, it is driven by an oil piston, and the computer controls it. And if it uh, sticks closed, that you'll have, you'll have loss of power. You know, and you can actually watch the thing move back there in the back whenever you're you know cranking it up. You know. Power stroke exhaust back pressure system 
is controlled to provide more heat to the coolant for cab heating. This system is used primarily to help initiate higher defroster temperatures faster. And it seems like that would be very important, doesn't it? Well, whenever you're in freezing temperatures way up in North Dakota, it's real important. <laughs> you know, believe me. All right, so the exhaust back pressure system operates during low load, low RPM operating conditions, and high load, high RPM conditions. The back pressure system is disabled to allow better exhaust flow from the engine. The EPR solenoid and piston, see there's a regulator down there, and this is just a line, line art drawing of it. I don't understand this one. Huh? I don't understand. It's on the turbocharger. Yeah. But it's an exhaust valve. Yeah, the turbocharger is actually spun by the exhaust. You got a you got a, a wheel over here, you got an impeller, and you got a turbine and all that, you know. So basically the whenever the wheel is hooked to the both ends it's hooked to one of them's in the exhaust and one's in the intake. And the more exhaust spins this one, the more it shoves there in the intake, you can see how it feeds itself. And it doesn't rob you of any horsepower at all like a supercharger does. You know what I mean? It actually increases volumetric efficiency of grabbing the air and shoving it in there. Why would a supercharger rob you of Huh? Why would a supercharger rob you of horsepower? Well, uh, because it takes engine power to pull it. Most of those are turned by belts. Yeah, but they're not supposed to give you horsepower. Well, what I mean is, you're using it's horsepower. You're, you're making, you're getting more than you're giving. That's but on, more. That's more. This efficient. is more efficient, but it spins like a hundred thousand RPM. It's just screaming, you know. Whatever. You're getting all that horse, all this, uh, horsepower. It's, it's using all of it. You get. Well, you're not using all of it, but you're you're, you're going to have to. You're, you're, you're going to get a huge return on the horsepower you're using. But this uses none. You see what I'm saying? A supercharger doesn't spin as fast. It doesn't usually wear out as quick. Uh, but it actually is driven by a belt or something else, you know. Now, some of the old 1271 Detroits we used to work on, it was on boats when I was in down there at Sabine, would have, you know, two superchargers feeding these blowers <laughs> on a boat. And these things were, of course, you know, they're actually two cycle diesel engines anyway, and they have to have a blower on them or they won't even do anything but idle. Um, all right, that's what the turbocharger looks like right there. Sometimes you'll see these things leave off, but you got a compressor wheel, you got a turbine wheel. The exhaust system is where the turbine wheel is. And you got a waste gate right here. This is normally how a turbocharger works. Now, the power stroke diesel, this one, uh, the, one that, the early one that I'm not talking about. I mean, it doesn't have a waste gate, per se. It's got the, the other. But anyway, this is pretty much how that works. And if the boost gets too high, it basically opens that waste gate and it keeps so much exhaust, it bypasses the turbine so it doesn't overboost, right? And the rotating speed of the turbocharger is really, really high, 100,000 RPMs. Charge air cooling system. When you squeeze air, you make it hotter. We learned that when we were talking about compression, bringing the, you know, two uh, PS, uh, two, excuse me, two degrees Fahrenheit for every pound per square inch. And so, if you're every time you compress anything, you're going to heat it up. Okay. So, in order to cool it back off, we heat it up by squeezing it. We run it through this thing. It looks like a radiator, but all that's on the inside of it is pressurized air that's being cooled by air blowing through this. And then that goes back in there. Uh, after the intake air leaves the turbocharger before it enters the cylinder, it removes the excess heat created by the compression. The hotter the air, the less dense the air is, and the less oxygen it carries. Have you ever noticed that when you're driving your car on a rainy day, it seems like it's got more power? The air is cool coming in. It seems like you spin a tire when you didn't even mean to something. Like that. Uh, it's not just because of wet pavement. It's because it's cold, thick air. There are more molecules of oxygen in a cubic inch of uh, cold air than there is hot air. I'll tell you, they say that the cold air intakes are better. Bingo! That's why these guys want cold air intakes. I'll tell you this, I did notice, now you say it, that red truck, I had that loud exhaust, I noticed in the winter it was really loud. Yeah, it was it's stronger. And uh, I was in a jet boat one time going across the Chattahoochee River out there, and it was about 80 miles an hour, and it started to rain. And you know, before I got in that thing, you know, somebody says, don't turn your head or you'll lose your sunglasses. You know, because here we were, I mean, literally 80 miles an hour across the water. You know, it was barely touching the top of the waves. And the guy that was driving the boat, you know, like that, and he saw, he got spooked because he saw the river patrol, and he turned his head, and his sunglasses were, Whoa! and now he can't see to drive, and I had to give him mine, you know, and close my eyes, because that rain felt like you are getting machine gun, you know, beat up on it. Anyway, uh, some restriction is good for the correct operation of the air filter, true or false? Well, the if there's not some restriction, it won't filter out dirt. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have some, right? Got it? All right. 
Because of the blank in a diesel engine, a certain amount of blow-by and crankcase pressure is to be expected. What would you put in that blank? Um, the worse you do on these, the more essay questions you will get. Because well, you know, hold on, now. Yeah. are we talking about? Because of it, what goes in that blank? I'm gonna say it's compression. Bingo, compression. He got that right. Give that man a cigar. Yeah, there you go. Oh, High five over there. Uh, the filter minder measures what? You know, some of these Chevrolet pickups have got filter minders on them. What does the filter minder actually measure? Uh, it actually measures the pressure. Come in. Come on in here, Christian. Sorry, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you guys. I thought I smelled it. <laughs> you thought you smelled it? I thought I smelled your foul it. stench out there. <laughs> and look, look at your bill. Charming to the last. Look at your bill. bill. What is my bill? Under. It's under three hundred dollars. Outstanding performance. I know it how to do It used to be. That. Did you I know actually? How to do did that. we take the fuel surcharge off of it? Yeah. yeah. I already knew. And the extended. This I, guy's my buddy. He I has helped that. me out yeah. a lot. I know now that. all the other safety clean guys, uh, they come in here, and I get this from them. <laughs> whenever he comes in here, he's just as nice as he can be. I got to do that every now and then. But I thought, you, you believe this? I'm actually going to be. I got. <clears throat> aren't you the big boss now? Well, it's great to be in custom, a customer service manager. Uh huh. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. However, there's times where you tell yourself that you like seeing his smiling face. And you can't do that when you're sitting in front of a computer. So I like Unless I send you an email with my smiling face. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I, uh, but it's more pay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not at all to be. That's all I got to say. That's a lot of responsibility. You're taking, you're keeping us safe from being EPA'd. I'll tell you what. Yeah. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. this, this little document right there. Mm -hmm. Takes care of us right there. Yeah. Every now and then we'll fill up our oil filter drum or antifreeze, you can haul all that stuff away. Just give us a shout, sir. I asked somebody, that, you know, that, that containment area I got out there, it's got the water in it, mostly it's water, but on the top of it there's some oil scum floating. I said something to the guys about pumping that out and they just basically laughed me off. And said, oh, well. well, I'll tell you what, truthfully, mm -hmm. I'm going to get with Ray and let him know that, you know, things like that are water yeah. and what's it's not. It's mostly water, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Put that on my desk in there, you know, when I lose it, if you don't. I'll do it for sure, sir. Good man. Hey, thanks. Right. Come see us again. We do. Appreciate right. your business. Yep. Guys, sorry for the interruption. Best safety clean guy in the business. Okay. I try. Thank yes, you. Sir. All right. The filter printer measures the pressure between the air filter and the engine. If the air pressure drops below atmospheric pressure because the, the filter is restricted, it moves that little thing and makes it show that it's a you know, filter product. What's the dual purpose of the 7.3 liter uh, engine exhaust system? Yeah. Did he, what did he say? I didn't hear him. To spin the turbocharger and blow up the motor. Oh, it also gets the exhaust out of there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not too complicated. The blank system is controlled to provide more heat for the coolant of the cabin. That's the back pressure yeah. control system, isn't it? Remember the, that plate that overflows with the oil piston? Uh, heats it up with her. A blank is designed to alleviate restriction created by the turbine wheel once it has reached its peak speed on the ones that have it. And, uh, your, you you say it's your waste. Waste gate. gate. Waste gate. gate. Waste gate. There you go. Lesson six. Okay, we're going to stop right here um, because you know we've uh, we've been going for about uh, 13 minutes and 45 seconds. And this is going to be a short video, so uh, for you YouTube guys are going to be disappointed because I know you like listening to me for another you know 20 minutes or so. But we're ready to hit the road because we've already cleaned up the shop and we did uh, lots of hard work today and we're putting lifters in an old truck back there too. Another thing that we did today. What'd you do today, Zach? Uh, a window regulator. And, uh, oh, and you almost ruined it, didn't you? Almost. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, what'd you do today, Mr. Griggs? Went to school and helped you with... Uh, He's that. a waste of there. He didn't know. Yep. Helped you with the, whatever the thing was in the box with yeah. the... Uh, yeah, that little starter thing. Starter. Okay. Yeah, no starter. All right. Well, that winds us up for this week. And we will resume on Monday.